Hello! Happy Thursday! Hi everyone! Hello, hello! Happy Thursday! It's Rob in my kitchen. I always love to see who's on time. Uh, oh yes, hello, hello, David Kaplan. All right, love the little shout outs. Oh wow, hey, hi Eric, how you doing? Okay, it's Thursday, we're almost, ah, it's five o'clock, we're live at five. I'm Rob from Theater Works and I am so happy now every Thursday to have you here in my kitchen. This is week four. And I hope uh, many of you are joining in regularly um, because it's really, really a fun, um, a fun time to connect. I had a really good time all the last few times and especially last week with my friend Connie, we had a few laughs. I am filling my glass. Today I'm having a vodka martini and it was well earned today with olives. And these are my favorite olives. I think this is backwards, but I learned that last time. And because it's been a hard week and we're in, we're in, uh, I was going to say, uh, we're in quarantine so long, I had to bring out the big guns. Belvedere, for those of you who know and love me, is my favorite vodka. And I don't get free vodka. It'd be good. Um, so coming into my kitchen, friends, colleagues, Great conversation, and we had a lot of laughs last time. But I want to start before I bring on my guest and tell you what is on the stove. Because I had a little bit of time today, but I have to have something on the stove. So I learned from my Aunt Carol, who's probably watching, this really new recipe this week for zucchini soup. And I, you literally take two medium zucchinis or three small zucchinis, chop it up, with an onion. I'm going to give this to you because it is, um, I don't know, it's so easy and so delicious. Zucchini, onion, salt, pepper, olive oil. Saute it for about 10 minutes so they get a little soft. Add about two and a half, three cups of chicken broth that I made myself. And then you cook that down. Um, I'll let for another 20 minutes. When I'm done with this show, I'm gonna put it in the blender. If you have a hand blender, you can use that. I'm gonna blend it up and I'm gonna have me some zucchini soup. So thanks for being here. I'm gonna to toast you all, your good health. Okay, I'm gonna bring on my guest right now. And I think you all know who she is, but let me see if I could find her and then I'm gonna brag about her. So hang on, here she comes. She's there waiting. Aha, Jen Hare. We're waiting for real Jen Harris popping on. Let me see. Here she, oh Hi. my God. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I, that that was... character looks familiar. So ladies and gentlemen, like... dear friends, Jen Harris. Oh my God. Um, she is well known at Theater Works uh, for Christmas on the Rocks. She has done all the all the female characters in Christmas on the Rocks for a number of years, and she makes me laugh every moment we share. So I love that. She's also known for um, the movie Gaby, the Off Broadway musical Silence, which was a unauthorized parody of Silence of the Lambs. We're gonna talk about all these things. And the HBO series, High Maintenance. And she's also a uh, producer and director. We're gonna talk, we're gonna have lots to talk about. Welcome, Jen Harris, how are you? I'm good, thank you for having me, Rob, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I am so, I was so excited to have you on. As I said to you, I think this morning or yesterday, I'm so excited to have you on because I can relax and drink yeah. a little because you'll entertain me. All right. You can get drunk. But before drinking? we talk about, this is I'm Belvedere drinking. Martini. It's a Belvedere olives. Martini. I'm turning and my for those, Okay. Yeah. For those of you who know, I like, I shake it like a hundred times because, mm -hmm. and I always get eye rolls, but I like it ice cold and I literally count. <laughs> Tanisha's like, yes, honey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, 
But before we talk about how we know each other and crazy stuff, where are you? It looks like a shower curtain. Right, first of all, uh, coconut LaCroix tastes like um, suntan lotion. <laughs> but it's my mother's favorite flavor, and that's what I have to put up with. I am in my childhood bathroom. There's not <laughs> I should have had a surprise. Oh, what's wrong with me? That's too bad. I should have come out of the shower. Damn. You know yeah. what? Hold on. Can you introduce me again? It's a good okay. Bit. It's a Here good we bit. go. It's a good bit. All right. It's a good bit. And I love the crop top, by the way. We'll talk about that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest for the evening, Jen Harris. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if my I God. My shit, if I had, had my shit together, that would have been such a better entrance. So I'm glad we rewound for that. No one wears but pants anymore, by the that way. That is like an awesome crop top. You Can know, we it's talk a, about it? This yeah. is a theater works crop. I'm giving you some some belly button. That's what everybody's doing now. Everyone's just being very sexy on the internet. That's a new thing now, you know? So yeah. um, do you live? This is a theater works crop top, high quality. Let me show you, let me share the back. All right. Wouldn't it be amazing if I did a whole like the, the new because theater works has all this new merch. It's super mage. Is it available on your website? No, it isn't yet. But you well, know, you know what? Theaterworks is going to get on top of that. Theaterworks is going to get on top of that. And then I'm going to do a home shopping and help <gasps> you sell. Yes. All right. Yes. I'm going to do a home shopping. I'm going to sell. I think I have but a Let's talk too. about the real reason you're asking that because you actually, okay. you actually right. want all the swag. <laughs> Look at it. I have a hat, too. Oh, the black box hat. My see? favorite. It's Love really, it. really good. It's really cute. And, anyway, and I and that's... I know you have the sweatpants because during the last run of Christmas on the Rocks, you basically blackmailed me every week for a piece mm -hmm. of swag. Yeah, I have the sweatshirt. I have the sweatpants, which are dirty right now because I did yard work in the sweatshirt. I have the crop top. I have the hat, and I have the bag because oh my god, it was like it was the last couple shows of Christmas on the Rock before Christmas. And remember, I was like, I'm not doing the show unless I get every piece of swag. <laughs> yeah, I, did. I was trying to remember yeah. how we met. And I re I know it was when we were going to do your first production of Christmas on the Rock. And I have to shout out to Harry Booby, who I keep trying to get on here. Harry Booby, I know we were looking for it was the second, second year. We were looking for another female to take over the multiple roles in Christmas on the Rocks. And Harry said, I know who has to do this. My <laughs> friend, Jen Harris. And, God, and how did friend. we, how did that happen? How did that happen? How did, I, like, how did like, so did I call you? What happened? Well, oh yeah. Well, Harry Booby and I know each other from Silence the Musical. He played Dr. Yeah. Trilton and it, like he became one of my best friends very fast. I still talk to him like every day. And he, um, and then he said, oh, yeah, or he said, oh, my friend Rob's going to call you. There's this really fun Christmas show we just started last year, and I want you to do it with me. It's just three people, and basically me and you, and, and, and a bartender, blah, blah, blah. And then you FaceTimed me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> which this was six and a half years ago. Was yes. FaceTime even at the, it was probably Skype. We probably Skyped. I think we Skyped. And I was, and I was actually at, we Skyped, and I was actually at Randy Harrison's a old apartment because I was cat sitting for Randy Harrison, who everyone knows from Christmas on the Rocks. <laughs> but um, and I, I think yeah, he, I think he signed on. I thought I saw his name flash by. We you might, know if he's we on? Might be signed on. Can right. we like scroll down to find out? We can. I don't know. You know what? Other people can tell us that as we talk. Other people yes. from Theater Works. Hard or Rand Randy's out there. You better say hey. Um, the right. so I so we skyped and I we skyped and. and and I was, I just charmed you. I guess I charmed the pants off you and, you know, or you were desperate or both. And you just, <laughs> well, I and have you to just, tell you, it's you one of the part. better decisions I've made in my career because you, you're so funny and so talented and so amazing. And you also, you might as well talk about it. You ended up, you, because you have had how many male, you've had, Three bartenders, right, and, and two other, and three, 
three. Harry, Matt, Harry, Harry Booby, Matt Wilkes, and Randy Harrison. But wow. I'm the one who keeps coming back because they all get other work. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> you are so crazy. Um, oh, but fun. Randy Harrison, hey. Oh my God. All right, Randy, stay close. I'm gonna bring him on in a minute. Let's screw it. Let's bring him on. And I wanna hear what he has to say about you. But before we do that, Tell me about, I'm not going to ask you who your favorite guy was, but out of the three, because I know you love them all, but what it's is so it fun. you love about each one of them in Christmas on the Rocks? Like the they one thing you love them. most, because I know you love them all. Harry Booby first. I mean, Harry Booby knows this. Like I can't, I, I quote his Hermie the most. <laughs> he, he, would, he would always go, he would have, he just, he has this this phrasing that he would do with his with his voice and his language. He, I love when he would just go, "Oh Manda," like that you know, that <laughs> phrase. And, and yeah. He would just go, "Oh Manda." He had a couple <laughs> of things in that just like tiny phrases that I can't get out of my head every year. I it's so interesting my... how they have all brought their own selves to the role and built on the knowledge without even knowing it sometimes, because they don't watch, they haven't watched each other do it. Oh, he said, it's me, bitch. I think that was him, it went by. Can you still but, see Yeah, can you see me? Wait, Rod, can you still see me? Because I got a phone call and I had to like shut it off. Okay. I can see you. We're Did you okay. not put your phone on do not disturb? I'm learning these things, you know, oh, how do, do I not see disturb. Oh, I put on airplane mode? Okay, can you still see me? No, 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 you go away. You got to put your phone on Do Not Disturb. Don't go away. Are you there? <laughs> I love Am I still here? that's you're you're here. I love that the queen of technology is fumbling today, and I had a total meltdown before the show. Michael McKiernan, are you out there? He had to give me a Xanax. I was like, oh I can't God. get on. I, I don't know how to get on. I'm not the queen of technology. All right. Anyway, yeah. secondly. Let's go to Matt Wilkes, who we okay. all love. What um, do you love most about Mel Matt Wilkes is in Christmas on the Rocks? Because I know they're all friends. Well, now I'm thinking of that time in rehearsal. I see. I'm giving tiny little moments. It's because fine. That's, because overall, they're all just too individually brilliant in their own way. But when Matt, remember when he jumped up on the um, bar yes. in rehearsal? <laughs> that yeah. was brilliant. And stick, I'm just gonna stick with Hermie, not that I don't love the other characters too, but when but when um Randy in rehearsal then like climbed up the bar stool. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. and remember, yeah, that was when Randy then climbed up the bar stool, that was amazing. That was amazing. Well, I'm gonna tell everybody that I had to start banning you from rehearsal Why? because because you'd watch the we were working and run the scene and you'd be like, No, no, oh god, oh, Oh my God! Oh, I know. I'm you're a, like you're so vocal. I'm a vocal. I'm a, well, listen. If you're come on, it's comedy. If you're not, we're gonna we're gonna laugh on our insides. You're out of the house. You're with a bunch of people. I'm Enjoy gonna the damn show. Let the actors I'm, know they're funny. Let the playwrights' words come out. Enjoy the damn show. When people just sit there and they're like, like, what are you doing? Enjoy the show. Come on, tell me how much you enjoyed the show. <laughs> Someone just landed a joke. Let it out. Let uh, your joy out. Let your joy out. Um, I think that Randy Harrison is here. So I'm going to try to do this. I never know how to do it. I'm going to bump you off for a minute. Oh, my God. And oh, I'm going to try to bring Randy on so you can have, like, a breath. Okay. And you can put your phone on Do Not Disturb if you want. But I'll be yes, right back. I finally figured that out, Dom. Okay. Don't go away. All right, everybody. I always think I... I always think I am, oh, there we go, here we go. Oh my God, I can't believe he's here. I'm waiting for Randy Harrison, you guys. Hey! Hey! <laughs> when you got Jen your theater works hat on. I did, I put it on, because Jen was showing off the swag when I signed on. Oh man, it's so good to see you. How are you doing in this crazy time? I am surviving. I am surviving. Where are you? Where are you? I am upstate where it's snowing and this hat is coming in handy. Oh my God. You yeah. look healthy and amazing, thank God. Do I? And, but, but I really want you to dish with me about what it is, because you and Jen go way back. 
tell me a little bit about how you know Jen and what is it like working with her in Christmas on the Rocks? I know Jen. Well, uh, I know Jen from Berkshire Theater Festival where we did work two shows at, at relatively the same time. She was doing a show that Matt Wilkes wrote um, probably 15 years ago or something. And wow. much like how you banned her from rehearsals for Christmas on the Rocks, she was leaving. <laughs> She was leaving, her show was closing before my show went up. So she came to see uh, the room run of Waiting for Godot that I was doing and was so vocal during that run through that I was like, who is this person <laughs> who is in this room? <laughs> um, and then we started karaokeing together. Oh my God, I never knew that. Oh yeah, we'd so, do like these crazy performance art. We would dare each other to do different uh, karaoke performances. In oh my South God, Beach, people are saying hi from Russia and Italy. Is that true or are they busting me? I know they're real. Wait, wow. where's Jen? We just dis where did Jen- No, are well, you? I don't know how to, I can't bring two people on, but I'll do oh, that I eventually. Oh, you could do two people at the same no, time. No, I can't figure it out, but you'll help me. But listen, <laughs> what is it that you love most about being with Jen in, you know, working on a show with Jen? Well, I think she's just one of the smartest comedians ever. Um, uh, she she cares so much about comedy. She uh, takes it really seriously and she's a perfectionist and she doesn't stop working. She doesn't stop being inspired. I mean, she's done the show for a long time and she keeps on coming up with new things and she just keeps you engaged. And that is something that you need uh, as a fellow actor, that's so, that's something you need in a, an acting partner. And you know, that's one of the hardest things about Christmas on the Rocks that we have to wait to the end to get you all back on stage together. together. But listen, you have to sweetest, promise though. you have to promise me you'll come on the show because we all want to talk about queer as folk. And you posted something recently. Are you doing some reunion? Something? You yeah, wanna, we're doing. Come on, let's plug it next Friday. Oh wow! Yeah. On what platform? I think it's going to be streaming on uh, on YouTube and on Facebook Live. Okay, well, post on your Instagram so we all know. I where will. It's yeah, going to be. A, I want to talk about queer and folk, and you know, and we could talk about cabaret because not many people know that you are a big musical theater performer. But mostly, before you go, I want to talk about how you broke my heart when you said you were going to be in buyer and seller, and then left the show. I abandoned you. <laughs> but you got a lot of leverage out of that. I'm still indebted to you, so. I did, and I will be calling that card in forever. But That's honestly, I, you know, I just saw that live broadcast the other day, and he was great, uh, you know, so and good. I thought about that. But will, will you come on sometime? We can just talk about you, because Jen's going to yell if I don't get back to her. Yeah, you have to get back to Jen. Um, I'm glad you're well. I'm Thank well. you for coming on. Of I love course. you lots. And uh, let's talk soon, okay? All right, bye. All right, bye. Oh my God, wasn't that a fun pop-up guest? I love the pop-up guest. Okay, Jen Harris, you gotta come back on because I really don't like being alone. Let's see, here she comes. Oh, thank you all for watching and really being here. Remember, this is, this is Get Sauce with Rob in my kitchen every Thursday, live at five. Oh, maybe we'll talk about who next week's guest is before we leave. But let's, but now this is all about Jen. Um, Jen, was, Jen, Jen. That was um, absolutely, I, I love Randy Harrison. What sweet, what sweet things to say. He's right. Well, <laughs> you are, you are a brilliant actor, comedian, and you are, you are one of those people. I have a, I have a handful of those people in my life, but you're like Lucille Ball, clown, funny, but you also, I'm serious, you also have so much depth and heart. And I don't think people realize when we're doing all that, you know, shtick and funny physical comedy, you demand that it's earned and that it's honest and that it serves the story. And that's the one thing I can say today to celebrate you. Because oh, um, that I, that I, you're not that just that like I'm a really, funny, crazy gal, you're not. That I'm, that I'm a really demanding comedian. And I am, I'm so, <laughs> so I just, uh, before I, just, I hate, I hate cheap pushed 
awful comedy. It makes me, it, I'm just, oh, I can't stand it. But. And <laughs> yeah, no, I love that about you. I really do. And you know that we're going to come back to this, so I'm not going to lay here too long. But you and Matt Wilkes ended up writing a piece for Christmas on the Rocks yeah, thank called. You. Karen. Paul. Hi, hello, my name is Karen. Hi, my name is it's... Karen. Is this Karen? What? <laughs> I'm not going to. Oh, my gonna... name is Karen. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. I was not going to help you out, even though you wrote it. Oh, Jacques Lamar says Jen Harris delivers piping hot sex on stage. Yeah. OMG. Jock, Jock is crazy, but you are sexy. Um, yeah, thank you. I, thank what, you so much why did Julie, can I just ask you just really briefly, like, why aren't you in New York? I'm glad that you're safe. Are you good? Oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm actually in my, well, my house that my parents moved into when I was- Are you in sleeping school. in your bedroom that you slept in as a kid? Well, no, I'm sleeping. Oh. My parents moved into this house when I was in high school. So, oh, okay. but it's the same town, Plano, Illinois. It's about 40 minutes west of Chicago. It's a cornfield out there. And then it's a farm over there. And then it's a corn, a bean field right there. And then it's a farm over there. Like that is what I grew I grew up in nothing flat corn bean farmland. And I'm living my best farmer life today. I help my dad with yard work and I work <laughs> on my farm. I worked Your on my best car farmer and, uh, life. That would be so happy to hear that I worked on my car. I worked on my car and um, I did yard work with my father. Um, so last, um, before last... you finish, Erica Erica Rothschild, who's also a dear friend, and she'll come on, says that she wants to do a play with you. That you'd be fantastic together. I'd love it. I'm in. All right. I mean, <laughs> I love. Um, I mean, so I why are you? Lies. Why did you? Why did you leave New York? Um, I was well. I. I was in California doing Hurricane Diane at the Old Globe. And so when all this was ramping up, I flew back on the 9th of March because the show ended on the 8th and they were getting nervous about like, oh, what are we gonna do? The next show is coming in. And they were just, you know, everyone was getting nervous. I flew back to New York and I was like, wow, it's very different here. And right away, I was asked yeah, car work. I knew he'd be proud of me. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and, um, and I drove up to, Ra or I went, Randy picked me up actually because I parked my car up at his house. So we went up to Randy's, which I love that place, and to get my car and then I came back and then it just, everything was, you know, crazy. And I live in an apartment with a roommate in Inwood and I wanted to wait two weeks before I drove out because I knew I didn't want to be alone. And like some people are, some people are kind of living their best life right now where they're sort of, for me, like I need some like love around me. I just, I can't. So I was like, okay, I'm going to wait. Like, because I flew back and I'm just going to wait two weeks and then I'll drive out to my parents and then do two weeks there. And then I got sick. And oh got no. Sick. Got the wait, COVID. sick, sick or just sick? I, mine was a mild, a super mild case. Um, but I was like. Of Corona. Are you sure it's Corona? I mean, no. I mean, unless you have a test, you're never sure. But my symptoms were the symptoms. And I FaceTimed with my doctor a couple of times. And she was like, yeah, you should just assume it. And for me, it was just like basically four really bad days of just like out, like out for the count. And then after like a week, I was like, OK, I'm fine. But then I waited another two weeks before I Coming well, home to your family, of course. Right. So and you felt I, fine for two I, weeks. Now I'm in my bathroom and my bedroom and staying far away <laughs> from my parents. Well, we're so, I'm so grateful you're okay. And thanks for sharing that story. Yeah. And I think it gives people hope that you can brush, have a brush with it. And I know that it was um, uh, uh, really probably a really hard, you know, few days, but you're here and you're smiling and you look amazing. So. Yeah. This is going to be a problem. We're going to run over, but I have to get to the game because the game is really fun. But before we do that, okay. silence the musical. Right. Because, you know, I'm obsessed with Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> and honest to God, I have never seen the musical and I'm obsessed with it. You're so, we need to get you like a video copy of it. Yeah. I need to, I need to hit up Chris Catelli and see if I can get a video copy. The director. But, but what story about, is there any story? I mean, how long did you play? Her. Well, I mean, we who did played, you play? I played Clary Starling. Yeah, <laughs> Clary, of course. Clary Starling. Did you um, do an impersonation or an impression or just you? Like, 
Did you do her? I did an impression. I did her. Yes. Yeah. I embodied her. With the mouth and everything? Um, <laughs> and I've seen Silence Musical, or I've seen Silence of the Lambs probably more than everyone. And it's insane. It's super insane. See yeah, that a million times. But um, we first did it at the Fringe Festival back in, oh my gosh, 2005? I was a baby. It's a long time. Yeah, you were a baby. And then, um, and it was this big hit, and it was like, obviously, it was amazing. And then it just took forever for it to then, of course, move off Broadway. And then like maybe four years later or five years later, finally we were moving and they shut it down the day before rehearsal. And it was awful. And I had another job that I had like said no to and I like didn't work for over a year. It was awful. And we were like devastated because we were finally gonna get to do it. And we didn't, excuse me, cut to, Cut to somebody cut saw to somebody just said she saw you or he saw you nine times. I don't know who it was, but she was fantastic. I saw it nine times. I Someone love... else saw it three oh, it's times. It's Kelly, it's my good <laughs> who also, by the way, comes to Christmas on the Rocks every single year. Has oh, not missed wow. the Christmas. Wow. Yeah, Kelly's fierce. Mm. Kelly, we love you, Kelly. Yeah, Kelly's a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, yeah, and then it finally moved off Broadway and. We did it in 2011 and I ran, I did it for a year and a half. And then I actually left the show because I was like, I guess it's just going to keep going. And then it closed like maybe seven months after that. Wow. But it was amazing. It was. Well, find us that video. It's a good time to air that video. Yeah, maybe, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we can find and it. Let's talk about um, high maintenance, uh -huh. which I know you were on payday, but what's your connection to the show? And come on, do you have any, nobody's listening, it's just a few of us. Yeah. Any good juice about high maintenance on HBO? Sure, of course. Um, well, I first, well, Andrew Femingella, who's the casting director, is um, casting me on the show. And when they were doing it, the web series, they did the web series version, Vimeo picked it up, and they did one season with Vimeo. And I was a teacher on, it was Genghis, the episode's called Genghis. And I had a wow. small part, and I was a teacher in an uh, in a um, inner city school or a school system. So that was it. Was really fun. Like Ben cut me. Ben Sinclair, who's one of the creators, edited it and cut and gave me like the best cut possible. And then years later, um, two years ago, a year and a half ago, they said we we wrote her story, which is what High Maintenance does. Each episode stands alone, and so they're like, we are writing Miss Farad's Miss Farad's story. And I was like, what? You're just writing an episode of High Maintenance. Wow. Of and yet my friend Isaac Oliver, who's my, one of my best friends, was one of the writers on the show, and it was uh, written by uh, Mitra. Uh, and Mitra Girari, I think I'm saying her last name correct, but she's incredible. And Isaac was also a writer on that. And I shot it, uh, yeah, about a year and a half, two years ago, maybe. And it was, I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say it was a big sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's be, because I want to get to one thing, but doing a sex scene in front of a camera, I mean, I hear that question a lot. Was it a very graphic sex scene? I mean, first of all, I mean, it's comedy, like, and, and in Gaby, there was sex scenes in Gaby. I mean, yes. you're not asking me to do some, like, Porny about like you're asking me. You're not asking me to be that lady. funny, intimate, right? Or that woman. I'm like that lady having that, that lady girl having sex. So it's, <laughs> it's so it's funny. So it's it's more like yeah, and, and funny. But you still have to be physically intimate, you know. Yeah. And like, what do they do? Like, are you okay? I'm just gonna ask because you all want me to. Are you like like you you and Matt are really good friends? Were you like really naked? when you shot that or did you have like the things the cover no you ha you have like things on but this is the story like in gaby this is the story man in gaby like i we were under the covers and i you know he had pants on you couldn't see when he came over and did that sex moment with me sex yeah. moment sex and yeah. i had to like pull my underwear off and like throw it like that like off the covers and go like that and that and i had forgot to wear like <laughs> A thong under the underwear. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, Matt, 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 I'm gonna be completely naked. I'm so sorry. He's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then he like rolled over. I mean, oh, it's just, 
we were fine. Matt but your BFFs, fine. you two are so cool. And he's another one who's amazing. I love his Instagram movies, Matt Wilkes, if you're yes. out there. We got to get him on. But you guys are like, I, that's the friendship that I knew the most because you guys did two years of Christmas on the rocks. But because I want to get to the game, I have to jump to that, that you are not only a fabulous actor. So you're going to have to come back on because I didn't get through like half my list. You have to come back on. You made a web series. You and Matt, talking about Matt, made well, a web me, series called me, me Matt, Matt and Randy. Randy. Randy directed it? Yep. Mm -hmm. You, Matt, and Randy made a web series called New York is Dead, which is so good. It's New a York is Dead. Right now. It's a tricky How do people right see it? Yeah, how do people see it now? Uh, you can watch it on Funny or Die. Funny or Die was our first platform that picked it up. Um, to show it out in the world, and or you can on YouTube, um, you can just Google um, "New York is Dead" the series. And okay, New York is Dead the YouTube, series, or you can watch all of it on Funny or Die. And it premiered. And on you made. Basketball. I'm going to shut up in a minute. You also are so that's like a creator actor, but you also are a producer director, and you made your short film directorial debut with Island Queen with a couple of like not so well-known actors like Rachel Dratch and Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Right. <laughs> what about, what's going on with that? Well, Island Queen is actually, I co-directed it uh, with my dear friend, Zachary Grady, who's brilliant, brilliant actor, brilliant writer. He wrote, he wrote a story about um, a young boy who's a hockey player, um, but has dreams of becoming a figure skater. But it's, <laughs> but, and he works on this, he works on a, a ferry boat, but on the busiest day of the year, Jaws Fest, he has to he has to work on the he has to actually work on the boat all day long, and he's going to miss tryouts for um, his ice skating. It's it's a <laughs> it's a beautiful story. It's actually very sweet. It's also very funny. Rachel Dratch is ridiculous. Jesse Tyler Ferguson is ridiculous. Maxwell Dowden, who's from Falmouth, it is his acting debut. He's wonderful. There's other um, amazing, amazing other casts. It's just really, really great. Meredith. Well, and, um, yeah. If there's any way, like, I don't know, like with the, all those like permissions, and I know it's complicated with producers and all that, but if there's any way we can show any of that <laughs> on TheaterWorks, you call me. But, but um, you were supposed to go to a bunch of film festivals. Right. And well, we, Corona, yeah, Corona's gonna, kind of like screwed that up a little. Yeah, we, you know, we were really excited to, and we made it with like the goal of getting into a film festival, which we did reach. And we we're going to be um, announcing all of them starting May. Um, but we did get into five festivals so far and we're really excited. Yeah, we're really excited about it, but we're really excited to share to share that. Um, so it is called Island Queen and we will have follow me. You'll be able to follow Island Queen, Island Queen film. Island Queen, is there a website? Media. We will be launching all of that May 1st. And so you'll be able to see. It's I mean, like, I could spend like another half hour with you. So if we go late well, what today. Are you, what are we doing? What else are we doing right now? <laughs> you have to go? I know, go. I've been like instructed to like stay, but you know what I'm gonna say? Sorry, everybody, screw it. What? What's everybody else doing? What's right. I'm going to stay on a little long because Jen Harris is here. Because, but we're getting close to game time. And I'm so excited. I'm going to go to game time for those who okay. don't want to stay on longer. But then we might circle back a bit. So okay. we play games of true and false to, okay. with our guests. And okay. last time we did all these things about true and false about mayonnaise because my friend Connie was on, who's Patty Mayonnaise and right. who is, was the craft's was the spokeswoman for Kraft's mayonnaise. So really? I'm going to give you a bunch of true or falses about the Christmas on the Rocks character. Okay. And okay. we're going to start with Zuzu. So okay. are you ready? I'm going to start with Zuzu. I'm gonna, I have two because, and I got to give a shout out to my team, Eric, Tanisha, Michael, who put all these together. And I love them so, um, much. Hi. so Hi, everyone. here's a quick one. Zuzu was named for a cookie. Zuzu from It's a Wonderful Life, who is the schizophrenic woman that comes in. <laughs> Your first character, right? Yeah. Zuzu was named for a cookie, true or false? And those false. of you out there want to try to answer, just chime in. False. It's true. What is that? According to Carolyn Grimes, the actress who played Zuzu, 
She was named for the Zuzu brand of ginger snaps. I have one more that is she really. Was a child. She was a little child when she shot that movie. Someone just made that story up to keep Okay, that. that's a lot. You're going to love this one. It's true. She said. Okay. The child actor, Carolyn Grimes, career was put on hold when an, in a Dickensian twist, she was orphaned and ordered to live with an aunt and uncle she described as religious fanatic. True or false? I'm going to say true. <laughs> Why? Because even if it's false, whoever wrote that sentence, whoever wrote that, I'm really proud of. It's true. Okay, good. It's good. true. <laughs> she was a survivor in real life. She was orphaned at age 14. Her ex-husband died in a hunting accident, and one of her sons died by suicide. Isn't My that, like, God. crazy? Okay. Here comes Karen. Now okay. this is, you better get these right, because Karen oh, is your next. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm just. Hi, like, Charlie. Oh, I love Charlie. <laughs> Charlie Music directed Avita, and he is like the fitness workout king of New York. But I love you, he's, Charlie. He's, he's the reason I can sing anything ever. Okay, he, let anyway, me start with an story. easy one. Frosty the Snowman was a hit song before it was a TV special. Yeah, true. True. Yeah, okay. it was originally written in 1950. And okay. it was like on the heels of Frosty the Snowman. <gasps> Kelly. Okay. Um, let me see. My glasses. Frost, Frosty the Snowman has three fingers. True or false? False. <laughs> How do you know that? He Are you like, did Eric fingers. send these to you? No. How many fingers where, does where he have, he Jen? Have he How many fingers does he have? None. He has, he has four, but in a famous continuity error, there's a version of Frosty where he's shown with five fingers for a brief moment. Okay, right, well, we're gonna move to Clara. Ready? Okay. Um, uh, let's see, which one is my favorite one? In some source material for the ballet, the Nutcracker, right? Clara is an unloved and neglected orphan. Because you know, in the, like the ballet, she's like the beautiful house and she's like the lovely daughter. She gets the big gift. Is that true? Or is there a version in the source material where she's basically an orphan and rejected and neglected? There is an us, there is a version in the source. It's true. You're like crazy. I have to start keeping tabs. And am I going to have to give you more swag? It is true. Yeah, of course it's um, true. And let's see. Let's go to little. To always... Okay, continue. What? I have to what? You just have to always assume that these old like stories and tales and fables, they've been turned around and like and translated 50,000 ways. It's you just assume. So a little side note, do you have a favorite Christmas on the Rocks character? And I guess I know you, I would yeah. say you can't pick Karen because you wrote her for you. So she's probably <laughs> your beloved special child. <laughs> so without Karen, you wrote, ah, look at that leg. So between Zuzu, Clara, hope the playwrights aren't all watching. Sorry, Jacques. So awesome. Zuzu, Clara, or little, Redhead girl is a small part, but. I can't, oh, come on. This all is right. so mean. Just tell me later. I like them all for different reasons. And different nights, I like different characters. All right. Well, Not that's that good. I don't keep my, keep my show, but different nights, I do like different characters. Okay. Jacques Lamar, you can answer this as we finish up, because you can text the answer in. Let's see if either of you know this. True or false? The little red-haired girl's name is Heather. It is Heather. Jacques, are you there? Uh, I'm going to see if he, if he answers before. You have there one second. So you have three red seconds. Red <laughs> there are no small <laughs> redheads, Rob. It is true. How did you know it's that? Heather. Yeah, her name's Heather. Heather. You do your, you're an actor who does her research. I do yes, research. she is unnamed and unseen in the comic strip. But in the TV special, she is revealed, and her name is said to be Heather. Do you know her last name? That would be amazing. I'd like flip a lid. 
Heather, Heather, um, uh, 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 Heather Feinberg. <laughs> Wald, Heather Wald. Um, as, in, uh, as in a wall, as in a wall? And I have one last, yeah, W-O-L-D. This is a good one. The last, the last trivia question, really quickly. If you have red hair, you get free admission to, Charles, to the Charles Schultz Museum. No, that's bullshit. Anybody? Anybody out no. there? If you have red that hair, is... you get free admission to the Charles Schultz Museum. That is the answer false. is true. We stumped you, Jen Harris. That is terrible. That is there an is a qualifier. There is a qualifier. It was one. It was one day. <laughs> That on, is absolutely awful. On Valentine's I, Day in 2011, they gave free admission to redheads. There you go. I don't, so, I, I'm wearing a wig. I'm wearing a wig. You know what? You can wear a wig. You can wear a uh, wig. You can wear a wig. So you wear a wig. thank you. I want to wrap up. Thank you for being here, you know, today and your bathroom. <laughs> And oh my God, Eric and Rob's friends like, oh my God, in your bathroom. But you know, this is a rough time for actors. This is a rough time for theaters and directors and designers and playwrights. And we have found, we keep finding new ways to stay connected and we're working so hard to stay connected with our audience. And I know these are difficult times, but you know that we are working so hard really, really hard to like get to the other side of this so you can be back in another show, not only Christmas on the Rock, not only in another show, but I hope people will, who can, will consider a gift. You know, you can Venmo at TW Hartford or go to twhartford.org. But I, I just want, I just want to say that all the actors like you are coming on as a gift to us, that you're not getting paid for this. I wish we could. And that you know, I, on behalf pleasure. of my staff, and, give it you know, to Peter, we, please. <laughs> we can't thank you enough, and not to. It, it's just so. And I'm going to say we're going to keep these connections as vivid as they are afterwards, because I think we were taking the connection for granted. I love you so much. <laughs> you never you you're. Theaterworks is my theater family. You all know that. You all know that. You're my sisters and brothers, like Kate and Cece. I can't, like, it's just, I've spent every holiday with you all. Oh. Both Thanksgiving and Christmas for the past six years. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine not. You know, I, you said something. Is there anything that you want? Because our audience doesn't often get, before we hang up, hear from an actor who's been in our theater what do you what do you have to say about like our staff, our 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 like production team, our mm -hmm. stage management team, the marketing team, the the box office? You know, you have a first hand perspective that people don't really understand. I'd love you to, if you don't mind, say something sure. about I, your I, connection I, to those people. Absolutely, our people. I, I I I said this to you. I said it to Harry when I left, and I said, I said it to you, Pleb, to the first year. This is the best regional theater I've worked at. And I say that because the staff, every single person is, you're all, you're all, I've never been to a regional theater where everyone is, is, is helpful and is supportive. And I know those words are so general, but you're all so smart and good at what you do. Like they're every single part. I tell you this, I'm like, you hire the best people. <laughs> I tell you that the best people. I'm so lucky. Directors, the best technical directors, the best box office, everyone works seamlessly together. Everyone is, is supportive and communicative, at least that I see on my end. And I, I they just, are. it's to feel, to feel so like sometimes, you know, sometimes, and you know we're actors we're essentially the last piece of the puzzle we are everything happens and then toss those little kids up there and then like hurry up and send them home and make like make sure they're fed and they come back the other night but you 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 always all go above and beyond you've never said no to me no one says no to me. no one's ever said no to me <laughs> we may say yes should. but <laughs> when you
when you probably <laughs> should. But no one ever says no to me. CC and Kate and everyone, I'm like, I need that everyone is just supportive. Also, you don't, you know, you make actors, you make me actually as an actor feel um, like my voice in the theater is important. Like well, what I have, what I think and what I have to say about what we're, what we're doing is important to all of you. I mean, you well, let me write. You you produced a play of my like you let me write well, a damn play. The feeling is entirely mutual. They're very real, as you are real, Jen Harris. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being here today. And next week, I don't know if it's announced yet, but next week, Deborah Jo Rupp will be joining me in my kitchen at five o'clock on Thursday. The fab fabulous and funny. You know, there's a theme. Like I love all these strong, funny, powerful women. But Deborah Jo Rupp will be joining us and, and picking up the torch where you left it off. And I hope you'll join us as a viewer. I love you. Stay safe. Help your mom and dad. Pick, do the lawn, do the yard work, and, and clean yard the house. Work. Goodbye, and everybody. Stay safe. I'll stay do anything safe, for stay you. Well. Heart, I'll do anything for you, <laughs> Theater Works. You know it. I love you. Love you. Bye, Jen Harris.